What up, world? It's Fess back in the studio with Reverb. So you've entered the rabbit hole of modular synthesis. You're ready to purchase your first rack, buy a few modules, but you're overwhelmed by all the options. Well, in my opinion, purchasing a full Eurorack modular system is the best place for you to start. And if you're already into modular, buying a full system is still a great way to get an assortment of modules from a company to experience their complete vision for creating sound. And with the full system, you're usually getting the main components of any synthesizer, a voltage-controlled oscillator, a filter or wave folder, and a voltage-controlled amplifier. You're also usually getting a few distinct modules from the company that separates their brand from the rest. You can find various full system offerings from a lot of the top Eurorack brands like Dofer and Erica Synths and Make Noise. But today, we have the System Coupe by ALM Busy Circuits. This system is driven by ALM's popular Pamela's New Workout, which is a clock generating function module and is the driving force within the system fully packed full of other great multi-function modules by ALM. We have the Quaid Mega Slope, which is a highly flexible single to five stage envelope, LFO, and step sequencer. And then there's also the Squid Sample, or Sample. <laughs> I always wanna say sample, but it's Squid Sample which is a highly functionable 16-bit sampler. It also has a USB drive for on-the-fly sample loading and saving. You could also sample CV or control voltage with this, meaning that you could use this module to modulate parameters on other modules or use it as a sequencer to sequence pitch on other modules. We have the MCO, which is a compact digital VCO with the morphing wavetable out uh, it has a pulse out and a um, sub square out that's always an octave below the main out. And we have a few modules in this system that you cannot purchase separately. We have the MCF, which is a classic analog filter with resonance control and high pass, band pass, and low pass outputs. And what's really cool about this filter is that it self oscillates. And then we could track that self oscillation with the volt per octave input. Also new and exclusive to the system is the Milton, all around utility module that provides amplification for various line level connections. Then we also have the basic mode, which allows you to send signals to multiple destinations within the system or even outside the system. So as you can see with the ALM system coop, or, you know, I always wanna say coop, but in England where ALM is based, it's actually coupe. So let's just keep calling it the System Coupe. This system was designed to be a modern groove box that combines the world of modular with practically any piece of desktop hardware or software. It can be great on its own, but works even better in tandem with your existing setup. All right, but enough of my yapping about this system. Let's just get into some of these different setups and patches. So this first setup, I'm actually just using an external sequencer. Um, if you have gate outs and CV outs, it's like made for this system. Uh, especially if you have like a desktop sequencer like the Arturia BeatStep Pro, or in my case, the Korg SQ64. I got five gate outputs on my drum track on the SQ64, and I'm running them into the five respective channels on the sample. And then I got the sample loaded up with some uh, drum sam samples from my homie Decap from the Drums That Knock series. And he's, you know, he's got plenty of drums that definitely knock. Yeah, so I just came up with like a little beat here. If I wanted to, I could add some modulation with these assignable CVs right here, and I can assign them to various uh, parameters like bit quality, rate. And then these inputs over here are actually for samples that you can control the pitch for via the volt per octave inputs. So this next patch and setup, I'm actually uh, bringing in external effects with the Milton. Um, I'm taking advantage of the line and Euro and an output, 
and I'm taking advantage of the attenuator. So I got this whole effects loop going with this swell delay pedal right here. Generating the gates with Pamela's new workout and the pitch sequence with Pamela's new workout. I'm taking the gate out of channel six and going into the Quaid Mega Slope. And I am taking a soft random wave output of channel seven. This is uh, something new with the new Pamela's new workout firmware. I could feed that to my MCO, vote per octave input, and I can quantize that because there's an internal quantizer in Pam's new workout as well on each one of these channels. So let's hear how that sounds. <laughs> This is a dry signal. And let's throw in this delay. What's cool about this randomness that you're getting on the pitch, if I find something I like, I can loop it. Let's loop like the last four beats of what we just heard. So that's using this Milton and bringing in external effects. So this patch, I'm just pretty much patched within the system. I'm not using any external gear, but I'm, I really want to show how this thing by itself can just be a musical idea generating groove box. I'm pretty much using every channel of Pamela's new workout right now. I still got gate triggering my Quaid Mega Slope. I still have a channel triggering the pitch on my MCO over here. And then I'm also using this eighth channel over here as a slow rising uh, triangle LFO. And if I adjust the level on it, I got that going to my pulse width modulation. I'm doing a pulse out actually that's going into the MCF. What's really cool about the Quaid is once you get an envelope setting that you like, you could just start messing with the stages and getting into all sorts of strange and weird envelopes. Let's go to my pitch on channel seven. Let's go up on that level a little bit. I'm still using that soft random output that I got quantized to a uh, pentatonic minor scale. And when I find something that I like, I can go back to loop and try to loop it so I can catch that randomness. All right, so for this next setup, I'm actually using my iPad, I'm using my same drum kit, drums that knock volume eight from Decap. And then I got some royalty free samples from MXX Audio that I'm actually gonna feed into the Squid sample via the Koala sampler from my iPad. This signal input here, you can pretty much run anything into here directly out of an iPad, out of an iPhone. So to get to the sampling section, you could just hit record and whatever channel you're on, it's gonna sample on that respective channel. You can do all this while it's playing too. So check this out. We're gonna replace the sample on channel five. 
let's monitor our line in. You hold function, hit record. Now we can hear what, our, what we're feeding into it. When you're on this sample screen, as soon as you hit record, it's gonna start recording. Nice. Let's uh, preview what we got. Cool. And now we can adjust that. If we go to cues, we can adjust the start, the end time, the loop. Each one of these channels, you have a maximum of 11 seconds of sample time. So you can get some pretty long loops with that. And uh, you can use this thing on here that they call cue sets. Chop up your loops a little bit and then you could trigger your chops or cues in this case in various ways. You could trigger them randomly. You could assign them to CV and run an LFO to the CV and trigger them. But uh, first let's create some cue sets or cues as they call them by hitting split. And what that does is it actually splits up the loop that we just recorded in equal divisions. stuck making sample based music and you're just playing with your chops and you just don't really know where you want to go with them running them into something like the squid sample and using randomness to trigger your samples and your sample chops can lead to a lot of happy accidents um, and that's the joy about modular So with this setup, I'm actually using the Novation Launchpad Pro and uh, I'm coming out with MIDI and going into the MIDI end on the mm, MIDI. <laughs> I just really like saying mm, MIDI. It allows you to practically connect any standalone MIDI controller to your system and have two channels of volt per octave outputs and gate outputs. You even have a velocity output here. So if your uh, MIDI controller has velocity control on it, you could use that. What I got going is basically just a basic subtractive patch with my MCO feeding into the MCF. I'm gonna use the Quaid Mega Slow and I'm using the gate output of the M MIDI and going into the trigger input because I just kind of want a basic attack and decay for this demonstration. So, let me go out of my unipolar output into the level of channel three on this Tango Quartet VCA. So that's cool. I'm using my MIDI controller now to actually track the voice of this MCO. I want to control the frequency of the MCF with maximum velocity. So let's actually go from the velocity output into the Tango Quartet uh, channel two. I'm gonna use my VCA as an attenuator. So now we can come out of output two and go into the frequency input of the MCF. When I do a hard press on a note, it's actually opening up my frequency on the filter here. Again, I'm using a velocity from my MIDI controller to actually open up this filter on the MCF. Um, and you could use this kind of in other destinations too. So this last patch, we're still patching within the system here. And as I mentioned earlier, one cool thing about this MCF filter is that it can self oscillate. Um, meaning you could use this as a voice and you could track that voice because you have a volt per octave input right here. 
I'm triggering the filter um, with this Quay Mega Slope envelope that's actually getting triggered by Pam's new workout. So here's the voice of the filter and here is my tracking. So now in this case, I'm actually getting my tracking still from that same channel seven that I showed you with the uh, S random output, but I am sending that pitch information through the Milton again. And I'm using the buffered moat on the Milton now. We have one in and three outputs that are bipolar outputs. So they go both ways. And I am using that to send to the MCF, but I'm also taking another copy and sending it to the MCO. Because you have a filter that self oscillates and you could track that and you have another VCO still, we can do additive synthesis. Additive synthesis is pretty much the principles of the principle of West Coast synthesis. Let's go out of just the main out right here. And let's go into the frequency of the MCF. And this is gonna get crazy. We could turn down our modulation with our 10 inverter right here. And then our modulation will get more crazy based off of whatever wave that we're outputting. So we could change the wave of the MCO. So as you can see, the ALM System Coupe offers a hybrid of both analog and digital technologies while representing all the great things about full modular systems. Acquiring a system will save you lots of time as you can almost immediately get to patching and creating sound while you're learning, as opposed to the trial and error that you could experience when you're trying to build a rack piece by piece. The journey through modular synthesis can be a long one and it can be quite expensive, but believe it or not, Buying a full system will also save you money in the long run as the need to buy more modules might be satisfied for like, I don't know, at least a little while. <laughs> well, that's all I got for you guys today. I'm Fest Grandiose, signing off with Reverb. Stay safe and keep creating. <laughs>